Now, it's your boy Chili is back at it again, and today I've got for you guys a little, uh, little capacitive um, touch panel thing. Yeah. Uh, so this is also an I2C interface. So I've got it hooked up on the same bus as we have the display hooked up on now. And it's taken me a little while, but I finally managed to get this bad boy to work. So. Well, how do we do? Well, let's take a look at uh, the screen here. We do the, the standard setting up. The, the, uh, the controller for the capacitive thing is called the MPR121. So we, we do the setup for that, which is basically just uh, fires a whole bunch of data into registers in the, con the memory. You can't see it, but it's a tiny chip on the other side of this board. So yeah, fire a bunch of configuration into there, and it's all ready to go. And then what do we do? So you can see here, when we do the I2C bus scan, now you can see we've got two devices on the bus. They have different addresses, which is nice. Otherwise, we'd have problems. Uh, so the I2C thing is, I think, default. Its address is 5A. Although you can possibly change that uh, by some wiring some things on here. But anyways, yeah. It's all good. So, I got this working. And the main thing that I first thing I wanted to test, and the only thing I've really tested so far, is um, I want, like you can pull it, you can use I2C to read from the registers and to get the state of it. But what you really want to do is you want to have it, when someone presses on this thing, um, you want it to send a message to your microcontroller saying, hey, something happened, you should look into it. And that's what this IRQ line is here for. So I decided I'm going to try to get this to work. And if I got that work to work, everything else should be pretty easy. Uh, and I mean, the reason why you want to do that is obviously you don't want to have a loop that's wasting time pulling this every, you know, n milliseconds. And second of all, you probably often want to put the chip to sleep when nothing's happening. And in that case, you can't be pulling. So, so chili. You know, you did a bunch of things, ran into a bunch of problems, there was a lot of things. First of all, step number one, you need a pull-up resistor. So this IRQ line is actually active low. So when an interrupt happens, when an event happens, it pulls the line low. But otherwise, it's actually in a, uh, in a high impedance state. So you've got to do a pull-up resistor. So that's the first thing that I figured out after it not working. And I put a pull-up resistor on there and it worked fine. And then I realized that in... The uh, in the Pi Pico, if I can find my mouse pointer, here it is. Uh, in the Pi Pico, so yeah, here you can actually configure your G, your general purpose I/O pins to be pull up or pull down, or even both pull up and pull down. Uh, so I did that in there, and I didn't have to put a resistor externally. Everyone's happy, and then I could find my interrupt working but it only worked in certain situations and I didn't know what was happening first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to um, let me see if I can find in here where is my so here's the callback for the interrupt this is basically your interrupt handler and what I wanted to do was whenever an event happened I wanted it to increment this uh, variable here um, but it was only happening inc incrementing once and the reason why was because when an event happens, this line goes low, but it stays low until you acknowledge the event. And by you have to acknowledge it by reading. So that's the first thing I learned. Reading acknowledges the event, allows another event to happen. And I was actually reading because, um, just by happy accident, let me see if I can find it here, in this loop here, I was actually doing the, uh, if you, maybe you don't remember, but uh, I was doing the read, the do-do bus scan. I was doing the bus scan in the loop here. So I had a uh, read line, and whenever I pressed enter, it would do another bus scan. And every time it scanned the bus, it would acknowledge the interrupt, and that would allow another interrupt to be checked. But I didn't know any of that. And so what I did was I figured, okay, well, I want to acknowledge the interrupt then. When I figured out that the interrupt needed to be acknowledged, and then I figured, okay, so I want to acknowledge the interrupt in my handler here. 
But when I put it in here, it didn't work. And I was banging my head against the wall. And uh, in the end, like, it was basically a, it was a comedy of errors here. It worked in the very beginning just by complete accident. I was missing so many pieces of the puzzle, but just by accident it happened to work. And then when I tried to change it, it stopped working. And that was because the happy accident was uh, unraveled. But eventually, you know, you tough these things out, you stick it out, and you figure out all the wrinkles. And all the pieces to the puzzle, basically, we're looking at, uh, what does it say here? So, I mean, the pull-up resistor, that was the first piece of the puzzle. Second piece of the puzzle, I needed to clear the interrupt after every uh, event, otherwise I wouldn't get any new events. So that means I have to read, uh, and specifically you want to read from register 0 or register 1. But the reading is tricky because you actually have to do it in two steps. You have to write to tell it which register you want to read from. So you got to do a write and a read in the same transaction. And the way you do that is this parameter here says if you turn it to true, that means that this is not the end of the story, there's something coming afterwards. So you do the true, you do a write, you write the address, and then you read, and that will read from that register. And the false here means that this is the end of the transaction. This sets a stop bit. This one gives you like a, uh, a restart bit or a continuation bit, whatever. It's I2C protocol stuff. So anyways, you get that done. You think, okay, now it should work. It doesn't work. Why? Well, because this thing is active low, that means that when the interrupt happens, it's going to be a high to low transition. But what I had in my bad boy, let me see here, in, in, init i2c, no. Where's my initial, init gpu, yeah. So here, I had gpa, irq edge rise. Because normally, yeah, rising edge is more common for interrupt, at least that's what I feel, and that's what I was using before. Except that I had it on rise when I should have had it on fall, and I wasn't detecting. So when I got all those pieces together, then we could finally get magic. So let's take a look what the what the beautiful stuff looks like. So that's not it. And we got to get into it here. So we initialize the OLED. We clear. We write the test screen. This is what the test screen looks like. And we write in my test text. Beautiful. Beautiful. And now... Now what it's doing... Uh, it's no longer waiting for input. If I can find my loop. Loopity loop. Here it is. So we got a loop here. We sleep for a thousand milliseconds. And then we check to see. We check the state changed variable. If it's not equal to zero we print out its value and we set it to zero. So this is going to say how many times the interrupt was triggered. So, let's go here. I'm going to touch the panel one time. And you see two. Why two? Well, you get an event for a touch and then you get an event for a release. Watch what happens when I touch without releasing. So I'm going to touch, go here, we got a one. Now I'm going to release, we get another one. And there you go. There's the beautiful thing. If I, if I wipe my finger along here, touch a whole bunch of these, and release a whole bunch of these at once, you'll see we get a ton of events every second, which is what you would expect. So yeah, there you have it. So my interrupt is working, and I can communicate, I can configure this thing. The, uh, the actual code to configure it is complicated. There's a lot of thresholds and like filters and stuff like that. And I just found this code on uh, GitHub and I put it in here and it worked. So that's what, that's as far as I care so far. Um, as long as it works, I'm happy. But yeah, now all I need to do is when I get an interrupt, I should actually read which button was pressed or released and, you know, make an interface for that. But yeah. Probably shouldn't be too hard, famous last words. And then we'll have input, and we'll have output, and it'll be beautiful. And now I'm thinking, so, I need the IRQ for this. I also need an IRQ for the level sensor. Now the thing is, with the pick, you get three lines for IRQ. Interrupt 0, 1, and 2. However, interrupt 0 and 1 happen to share the same pin 
with the freaking I2C uh, clock and data pins. So that means I can't use them. So I only have one interrupt pin. I got two things I want to check for interrupts. Annoying. I could get around it. There's a bunch of different things I could do. But I'm at the point here where I'm thinking, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to write, I don't want to rewrite the state machine in C for the pick. I don't want to, you know, do the interface on the freaking pick in plain C. That sucks. I want to use C++. So I figured, you know what, frick it. You know, I said I was going to use the pick, but I changed my mind. I'm going to use a freaking Pico and we're going to make the project in the Pico and the final thing is going to be in the Pico and I'm going to be happy. Pico costs $5. It's cheap. I could buy like a lot of Picos, and I'm tired of a pick. You know, I, I set myself the the uh, the the goal, the the task of doing this with one of my picks that I had lying around. But I'm like, no, I want to code C plus plus. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna solder on some headers, header pins onto this. I'm gonna slot it into the breadboard, nice. And I'm going to rewrite the code here. I'm going to rewrite a state machine. I'm going to have a proper timer, proper clock. And I'm even going to log into an EEPROM. I'm going to log all the events, like whenever, basically whenever it fills the tank. And, but uh, yeah, and I want to make it so that it, on runtime, I can change the the time that it opens the valve for. Lots of cool things. And I'm not going to do any of those things in C on the pick. I'm going to do them in C++ on the Pico. It's going to be sweet. All right, your boy Chili is back, and he's set up the reading of the uh, the state of these things. So you got, you know, like I showed you in the last video, uh, we got the interrupt all set up. We've also now got it so that when we get the interrupt, it reads the state, and it writes to our, ba our bad boy here, the uh, LCD, if I can get the focus. Yeah. So I'm going to touch the first four zero one two three here and you will see on the lcd when i touch them yeah okay well if it can freaking focus there you go release touch release touch yeah and it works very nice i can uh, swipe my finger along here and uh, we see each one of these little cells in here corresponds to one of the uh, the buttons on the touch uh, it works very nice let's take a look at the code quickly it's not a yeah. Uh, it's not a very complicated system here. Everything's been worked out. I got my uh, the buffer here. Uh, and what we're doing is in a loop here. We wait for an interrupt, and if an interrupt happens, we check to see if the state of the input has changed. And if so, we read that state, and we basically generate a pixel buffer, a line of uh, columns, and we fire that out to the OLED. And that's all there is to it.